Today is April 14, 2021. It was on April 14, 1521, exactly 500 years ago now, that the wife of Raha Humabon of Cebu was baptized by Father Pedro de Villarama, Valderrama, and was given the Christian name Juana. It was also on this day that she received the image of the Santo Nino as gift from Ferdinand Magellan, who I suppose also stood as her Ninong, her godfather. And so, the Santo Nino became the first Christian icon ever to be introduced to our native ancestors. I think I have told you many times before that icons are theological statements. And so, what statement is the image of the Santo Nino supposed to represent? Well, that Christian discipleship is the way of spiritual childhood. Spiritual childhood. For the Christian faith, as we grow old physically, we're supposed to become younger spiritually. We're supposed to grow spiritually into infants who are being prepared to be born from above. As Jesus said to Nicodemus in our gospel today, in John chapter 3, verse 3, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Of course, Nicodemus fails to understand this. And in the verse that follows, he reacts and he says, But how can a person once grown old be born again? Surely, he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? For people like Nicodemus, spiritual childhood is something difficult to understand. You see, the Santo Nino is more than an icon. It is a profound way of life and a spirituality that sums up for us what it means to be a disciple of Christ. You know, this devotion was developed by the Carmelites and became a full-blown spirituality, developed especially by St. Therese of Lisieux, whom Catholics know better as St. Therese of the Child Jesus. St. Therese called the Santo Nino spirituality the little way. Taking her inspiration from Mark chapter 10, verse 15, which says, Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child cannot enter it. It means the kingdom of God is not accessible to people who do not attain spiritual childhood. The spiritual childhood that Jesus is talking about as a way of life for his disciples. If we follow the way of Jesus, we follow what St. Therese calls the little way or the path of littleness, meaning the way of humility and servanthood of the Son of God who became human so that we humans can become sons and daughters of God. Remember how he said this to James and John, who had also been bitten by the virus of the desire for power. How they wanted to be seated, one on his right and the other on his left. And how Jesus said to them, anyone who wishes to be great among you has to be your servant. 
Anyone who wishes to be first among you has to be the slave of all. For Jesus, the true way to greatness is not power, but humility. It is not lording it over, but servanthood. I wonder if Antoine de Saint-Exupéry did not have the infant Jesus icon in his mind when he depicted his little prince character in that beloved little book. Most of us were introduced to that book, The Little Prince. The Little Prince has a lot of amusing comments about the ridiculous things that grown-ups are doing. It depicts the grown-ups as a group of people who have lost their sense of imagination and their ability to see what is essential. He calls them the people who are concerned only about matters of consequence. They would not believe an astronomer because he was in a Turkish costume. They are obsessed about counting things, even the stars, as properties. They are always in a rush in order to save time. They have no time to smell a flower or to admire a sunset or to befriend a fox. They have lost the ability to understand why a little rose would mean the whole world to someone like him. I think the most important lesson on discipleship that Jesus taught his disciples was this. How to grow into a child of the kingdom and how to counteract the lion that is in us that wants to behave like ridiculous grown-ups who play God, who compete with each other, who are aggressive or even violent, always aspiring to be great in the wrong sense of the word. Well, nowadays, people want to remain young, even as they grow old physically. They think they can look young by having a facelift or by wearing trendy clothes. But you know what really makes us age spiritually? When we learn to hold grudges in our hearts, when we refuse to forgive, when we become resentful or envious or stressed out by worries and fears and the constant need to compete in order to prove ourselves or to show that we are better than others. The signs that we are getting old, not just physically, but also spiritually, are when we are annoyed by children and are distracted by their presence, when we exclude them and we refuse to count them in. When grown-ups declare their activities as for adults only, be careful. <laughs> It means they are going to engage in something like pornography, violence, cruelty, indecent talk, and cuss words. We exclude children because we have reason to be ashamed to be seen by children or to be heard by children this way. We do not want to be seen by children when we are engaged in shameful things that we do not want them to imitate. And yet, on the other hand, when do we become gentle? When do we become affectionate? At kailan tayo natututo na magkaroon ng good manners? When we are in the company of children. 
The Santo Nino is the little way that St. Therese had learned from Jesus. Only people who can humble themselves before God will receive God's mercy and forgiveness. Only people who know the way of humility will be able to understand the lowly, the last, the least, and the lost in society. Only those who can accept their littleness before God can understand and express compassion for the little ones, the proud and the arrogant, because they think too highly of themselves, are the ones who tend to be cruel and oppressive. They tend to step down on the lowly like dirt. Those who behave this way must be reminded of the warning of Mama Mary in the Magnificat. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. St. Therese also tells us that those who learn the little way will never feel terror or negative fear before the Lord. Like little children, they will leap with joy and excitement and not be afraid to fall because they know that the loving Father will catch them in His arms and enfold them in His loving embrace.